Welcome ladies and gentlemen and thank you very much for clicking on the video. In the background we have a Joan of Wheel Arc, um, no, Joan <laughs> of Arc Wheel, which I have spun in the last two days. And I got actually 99 um, sculptures out of 100 spins, which is very good value if you consider the speed ups and resources and everything. And also I have my free spin tomorrow and well, who knows, let's go for the 8 spot. So I know I'm about uh, to open Pandora's box, but if nobody else does it, I'm going to do it. However, I want to make clear that I'm on your side. Monetization in Rise of Kingdoms is really bad. And I want to try to explain why I'm saying that. The reason is everything in the game is either directly or indirectly monetized, which then has you wonder, is there even anything in the game that portrays or showcases your level of activity and, um, and contribution to your kingdom's uh, endeavors? So for example, there is no re reason to monetize Crystal Tech. It should be completely free to play because then you would have people form crystals through being on the altar, being in ruins, uh, farming barbarians uh, and doing all that stuff, being active in the game. It's also the four major resources I think should be um, completely free to play. There should be no way whatsoever to buy them. Uh, food, wood, stone and gold should be completely free to play. Uh, also, there is the Champions of Olympia medal, which if I'm thinking about it is quite literally the only thing in the game that shows your level of activity. But even then, you have to question how much of a performance indicator is it actually. because. I'm going to be honest, I've been in Diamond twice. This is in Season 2 and in the most recent one. And especially in Season 2, I mostly did it just by actually being AFK. I'm running to a flag, I'm standing there, I'm watching Netflix, and maybe I do recognize that I'm being attacked. And that was with me playing um, Charles Martel with uh, Sun Tzu, playing Richard with Joan, and playing uh, Minamoto with Tao Tao. Then in the last season, yeah, okay, I gave a little more effort and tried to put my mobile knowledge into use, you know, with map awareness and that stuff. Um, but I can't really say I had a feeling of a reward when I got the medal. Yeah, because I knew that you can just spend a little more time doing nothing in the game and or in the event and you get the same thing. So to me, um, like I said, the problem with the monetization is there is no real way to show your level of um, contribution or commitment. Now. I guess you could maybe even say kill points, but no, I don't agree with that sentiment uh, simply because you don't know when you look at kill points, you first of all don't know where are they coming from. Uh, I know a whale who switched into a very big kingdom about a year ago and he had about 1.8 billion kills. and about a hundred million power. And he made very big promises uh, coming into his new kingdom. However, what they didn't know is, I would say maybe 80% of his kill points actually came from zeroing um, idling players in their own kingdom and also um, may, uh, having duels for my dear's governor. There was most of his kill points, like 80%, if not maybe even more. And well, then he got zero because he didn't do anything in, in his new kingdom. So I don't really see kill points as an indicator of your 
commitment to the game. It's also, you never know um, at which time did this person actually get the kill points. It might be, yeah, this, this person has 4 billion kill points, but this was two years ago and the level of commitment went all the way down. You, you just never really know. Um, but even if you consider kill points, well, then that's quite literally the only thing that has any indication of performance and commitment, which I think um, is just bad. So however, two things can be true. The monetization in Rise of, King Rise of Kingdoms being bad doesn't automatically mean it's not free to play friendly. And I want to start this off with the community. So I personally, and this is not a flex or anything, this is just to give my statement weight. Um, I have extremely extensive knowledge in when it comes to gaming and gaming communities. Um, I've played two games on an actual esports level, and those are two of the absolute biggest games in the world. Um, then I played another one uh, right under the eSport level and another one on the highest level, on the actual highest level, but it's not represented in any kind of like eSports uh, area. So I do know a thing or two when it comes to gaming and its communities. And I have ne never, never since or never before or since seen something this amazing, wherein I, I think it's now over three years in Rise of Kingdoms. I've never seen this, where in, in all this time, I have not seen a single person say anything bad about a lower power player or free to play player. Everybody is friendly with each other and so on. Of course, you sometimes have in Last Kingdom, you have somebody talk about somebody else's kill points. But I mean, it's Last Kingdom chat. And usually the people who are there are actually looking for some, you know, some verbal confrontation or like text confrontation, I guess. Um, but yeah, yeah, in general, um, everybody is super welcoming towards everybody. And even the biggest kingdoms in the game are actually actually welcoming towards free to play microns. And I would say very often this is because free to play players have um, have more often than any other players a um, a desire for a social aspect in the game. And you need those kinds of players because they bring life to your kingdom and alliance they occupy the chats they do the extra things they they um, are participating in events and stuff like that and you need those kinds of players uh, i was in a imperium kingdom and I, ha I had seen something really weird in a whole lot of events like um, let's say silk road for example you have had every single time you had the same people participating where it was the very high top notch people like you know our four players um so officers um but also the whales and you know just top notch uh in from a kingdom perspective and then you had a whole lot of people who weren't participating and then you had the free free to play players chasing free to play value and all that is to say the community when it comes to free to play is absolutely amazing, which is the most important thing overall. It, it, it like uh, everything else I think is secondary. Um, for example, play, just play a game like World of Warcraft, Warcraft and be a bad player. Like people will let you know they will have have you like they will have your family die from cancer and everything so then the next thing is and this is probably the craziest statement that has ever been made in rise of kingdoms everything you can get for your money you can also get free to play this is only excluding Minamoto and Hannibal Walker. 
Those are two commanders. Uh, one of them is completely irrelevant. Irrelevant to the point where if they remove the commander to tomorrow, nobody would ever notice. Nobody would know. Your Hannibal is gone, you will never know. The other uh, commander is Minamoto. He is um, he has some relevancy, but he is definitely 100% not important to have. Absolutely not. So those are the two things. And then we are looking at some stuff like avatar frames, but those things are literally irrelevant. Um, unless you are looking, you know, for like uh, cute avatar frames. I guess there are people um, who are looking for that, but then it should also be said, um, you can get dozens and dozens of that stuff free to play. So then the the highest value in, that you can bring into the game is actually your time. That is that is the gold standard for Rise of Kingdoms. Um, even when you look at spenders, what they are buying is time, and maybe if they choose to do so, be a little more lavish with their resources. Um, and by resources, we are talking about everything. We are talking about tomes of knowledge, uh, sculptures. We are talking about the four main resources and gems and so on. Um, but otherwise, you can get everything free to play and you just have to spend time and acknowledge your level of competition that that is like quite literally when it comes to your um, pure gaming experience in rise of kingdoms may be the most important thing you cannot be a 60 million power free to play player and look at a 100 million power player or even a 70 million power player that is spending $500 a month and and be dissatisfied or uh, or infuriated that this person has something you don't have you have to acknowledge your level of of competition and the community definitely sets a very healthy baseline for this because nobody will ever expect you to go out on open field battle and be like hey 60 million free to play player there is the 70 million power spender please go kill him nobody will ever do that everybody knows your level of competition so it is on you to actually also acknowledge that now in terms of F, um, free to play friendliness in the game like I said, time is your most valuable asset. And by spending time, you can actually offset a whole lot of the disadvantage you have when comparing yourself to a spender. But also, of course, a another free-to-play player that is in your power range. So let's say you go into a KVK and you are at, like I said, 60 million power. and in your opponent kingdom you have a 60 million power player that is also completely free to play what you now have to do is spend more time in the game and play the game play the events get the free value and you offset any disadvantage you have and maybe even like you could compete against a 70 million power player that is spending money in the game but is not doing all those extra things so this person now doesn't have the resources to train troops and or heal troops and so on and so forth that being said i want to make an example i am in kvk right now and i am going if that is if we are um going to compete for the last zone in this kvk if you are going to compete the, uh, for it and we are successful i will actually compete for a top five spot in honor now here's the thing i am at 120 000 honor but i have only spent 25 000 ap the people i'm competing against most of them have spent way over 100 000 ap the way i'm doing is this obviously is by barb chaining so at this point we are about 18 days into kvk and i've spent i don't know 60 hours maybe of just barb chaining 
Now this bulb chaining has given me about 750 million resources. It has given me any amount of crystals. It is definitely six digits. I would say maybe 250,000. I'm not sure. Um, it has given me maybe 10,000 crystals. I'm also not super sure, but somewhere in that ballpark. Um, I would assume for any like really solid day of bulb chaining, I'm getting about close to a legendary equipment material. And it gives me a like uncountable amount of speed ups. I have no idea how many, but it's tens of thousands. Um, it is at the level where I'm actually actively hunting um, the troop training and power increasing quests from the bastions. So I can, um, with the Kahar items, I can offset my crystal disadvantage. So I'm training a whole lot of troops, but I'm actually not even losing speed ups because of all the speed ups I'm farming through bulb chaining. That is literally, literally being free to play friendly. That is free value. You just, like I said, you have to spend time if you don't have the time, that is completely fine. Not everybody, like I, I'm in the position right now where I can really spend insane amounts of time in the game. And not everybody has this time. Like I, I have also been in situations where I didn't have time in KVK, it happens. And that is of course fine. But then you have to acknowledge that. You cannot say, hey, I'm not spending money. Um, and I also don't really have time. I'm a free to play player who wants to have a hundred million power. Well, I'm sorry, but that's not how it works because at that point you are asking for handouts and you can't complain about other people have having stuff that you cannot get. That's not how it works. Like you, you have to give something right. Like I cannot play arenas in World of Warcraft. Um, put my mouse and my keyboard away, play with a racing wheel and then complain to my to my uh, teammates why we are actually losing rating. That's that's not how it works. Like you, you have to give something um, and the game actually gives you everything you need. Um, now, one last thing I want to mention is events and in particular Golden Kingdom and Champions of Olympia. I have seen many, many people who are not playing these events. The arguments are usually they are um, they take too much time. They are boring or not fun and they are too difficult. No. Golden Kingdom is not difficult. If it's difficult, you are doing it wrong. That's that, like full stop. 100%. If you can't finish Golden Kingdom, ask around, maybe, I don't know, maybe there is a good video out there explaining how it actually works. And like, I'm sorry, but don't go to the big YouTubers and watch their videos because they won't explain it. Um, but it is not difficult. Um, it takes too much time. Okay. Uh, I have footage of me finishing it in 38 minutes. Um, I've did it on stream in 55 minutes four days ago. Let's like be a bit beneficial, let's say an hour. So you're telling me you have two hours in the Alliance chat a day, but you don't have over the course of three days an hour to finish Golden Kingdom and get the free to play rewards because this is literally free to play. Like you can just click on it and play it. Then for the fun, well, I'm like this very uh, subjective. This is just me personally. Um, I don't know what's fun about the Wheel of Fortune. Uh, it's literally toddler entertainment. You are clicking a button, a, a wheel is spinning, giving you like colors and stuff and they swirl and that's it. I have no idea what's fun about it, but okay. So you don't want to spend those 20 minutes uh, over um, for three days uh, to finish Golden Kingdom because yeah, it's not fun. Okay, uh, but then you can't complain uh, when somebody does it who also doesn't have fun. 
because this person wants to raise their level of competition. That's how it works. So all it takes in Rise of Kingdoms to actually enjoy being free to play and realizing it is friendly towards those players, um, acknowledge your, your level of competition. So yeah, thank you for watching. Bye bye.